Hi guys, welcome back. In this episode of the solar electricity, I will show you in three simple steps how I collect and process 18650 lithium ion batteries. I will just quickly go through the basic steps that are how I collect them, how I strip them down, and in the last step how I measure them up and get them in different beams to later processing. So let's start. First of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about safety. As you all are aware of, lithium batteries aren't the safest chemistry around, even though the lithium ion is a little bit better. When you are processing batteries like this, you need to take a couple of measurements, and that is especially be aware of that it can catch fire. I mean, it can do horrible things. If, if you haven't seen that, take a look below and you, I will show you a video during this. The thing is, when I process them, I always make sure to have a fire extinguisher around. Keep that in mind, have some kind of fire extinguisher that is made and will be able to actually put out the fire on lithium ions. Uh, secondly, have a beam around as well, some kind of metal beam. Uh, preferable standing on a floor or something. Lithium burns with a very very high temperature. And let's continue with actual teardown. First let's talk about how I scout. One of your biggest sources is that you have friends working with computers. So what I do is actually utilize them and make sure that every kind of laptop battery that they get in contact with they send to me. Uh, it may be also that they are working in some kind of computer place. Ask them. Let's see, I mean, in some cases they actually just throw the batteries out. Ask them if you can have them. Um, I also go by and check for instance Facebook, uh, eBay, all kind of different places where I can just source the batteries, even buy them. Um, also I go and check out local stores like recycling stores among others where I can find a lot of batteries from. Time to get them opened. Before we start, I just want to mention that you should have some kind of protection. You should wear gloves and you should wear something for your eyes. Because the, sh the plastic in this case is an electronics inside, they are sharp and you will consider the amount of force you need to use. You will cut yourself. Um, I'm using some old fashioned pliers and that's generally good enough. Um, also make sure, as I said earlier, to have somewhere to toss the batteries if something may happen, if you short circuit them, because you will create sparks. So, opening them up. As you can see, I started in the edge and tried to tear it apart where I actually opened the side. I generally always start to try to open them on the edge where the charging contact is. And that generally works out really, really fine. Then from there, it's just a matter of getting everything out and it's a matter of learning how the different packs actually do work. And as you can see I throw the electronics in the bin for the electronics. Let's speed it up a little bit. Uh, another pack, the same type. That's another view. Unfortunately the camera wanted to move a little bit. This one went a little bit faster to open up. One again, I throw the electronics in the electronics bin. And here you can see inside there was some tape, double sided tape, and that's awful. And in this battery you can see it's a little bit narrow in one end, and that's because it has a pouch type of lipo, uh, actually lithium ion pouch. Uh, hopefully I will get it up soon and you will see how it looks like. As you can see I'm bending the edge as best as I can because I don't want to touch the pouch itself because it will not withstand the jaws of the plier. So it's this is a little bit trickier to get out. You need to be careful. Here you can see it really not useful in our case where we use 18650 and in this ki kind of pack there are only three 18650 batteries and even more glue it's now time to actually clear the batteries from all the junk as you can see I pull gently towards me 
If you do that, you will get most of the stuff away. Uh, I'm using a little bit too big ply though. Once again, prying it at the side. It's a lot of work to actually get this done, to sort it out and everything. Next pack. As you can see in Hedemay I have the different pouches where I actually put down all the cells. And here you see me prying it to the side again and there isn't that much left on them. Cleaning it up from strips and glue and all kind of stuff that are on them. Now it's time to measure. As you can see here on the image that pops up, I'm just quickly measured them to make sure that they are above one volt because that's where my charger starts to charge. Uh, I'll also show you how I quickly file the edges down a little bit if they are too harsh. Don't mind the plastic because you can buy and cover them with new plastic if needed. I had one dead battery lying around, so let's see if we can pop that up. It was around like 0. Point something volt. So I'm us using my bench meter here to actually pop it up and you can see it goes up pretty fast, 350 milliamps. I leave it there for a couple of seconds to make sure that it actually goes up, and then I measure it again. And now we have above one volt, so let's toss it into the let's test bin. Here we have a cell that is actually not working, gives zero volt. And as you can see here, I tried to put in some uh, power into it, and nothing happens at all. I even test so that, uh, as you can see, it's actually giving out. So let's pop the seed. I do not recommend this at all. You can read a lot on it on the network, but let's see what happens. As you can see, it now gives voltage again. But as I said, I do not recommend it. It popped the seed for some reason. So let's start charging the one in the bin. Put it into my charger. And I generally charge test them with one amp. So let's run one amp cycle. There it starts to charge. The voltage will most likely slowly raise. So let's fill up the other charges as well. When they are done, I mark them with some tape. Uh, the tape is just for being able to write the, ampere, the milliamps that are on them. And when done, I sort them in different trays. In this case, I just lay them up, but I do sort them in one about two amps and one below. And a big mess after that's done. A lot of beans, a lot of stuff a little bit more cleaner and here you see the different I have thrown out, I have those that should be tested and those that should be tested with voltage input and some pouches and here you can see a, a typical charge or discharge rate curve for a So guys, that's everything for me for today as you can see you have been stepped through the process where I collect, sort and even charge and test them to make sure that I have decent packs. In the end, 
this is what I end up with. Building them together with blocks, blocks like this here, it's great, very very simple in the end to use them. And hopefully you will follow me in the next video because in the next video I will tackle the fact how I actually put them together, how I sold them, fuses and everything included. Thank you for now, please subscribe, like and I'll see you next time.